In this video, I'll be playing a summertime jazz piano solo. My name is Paul Toby from jazzmental.com. Thanks for joining me. This is video four in our playlist on summertime. We basically took the tune and applied bossa nova feel to it. Kind of fun. If you missed those videos, I'm gonna post a link up here to the playlist and you can start the playlist from the beginning. In this video, what I'm gonna be doing is playing a solo and then I'm gonna be stopping from time to time and explaining what I'm doing. Now, obviously the chords and scales and all of that, I'm not really gonna talk about in this video. I'm gonna talk about the riffs and the soloing that I do and try to explain it as best I can. If you want information on the left-hand chord voicings and the soloing from a chord perspective and from a scale perspective, please refer to the playlist that I posted up here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is play a little bit, find something interesting, stop, and then explain that to you. You can see the lead sheet on the screen here. This is basically the, the summertime lead sheet in G minor. And let's just start it and see how far we get. Right, so I wanted to explain what I did there. I'm essentially playing around with the blues scale. And the riff was essentially something like this. So taking the fourth to the fifth and the passing chord. So my second finger is on the C and then the third finger slides from the C sharp to the D. And then that riff there is five notes. One, two, three, four, five. So that's just the blues scale. Okay, let's keep going with our solo and see what else we can come up with. And I'll try to explain what I'm doing as I'm going through it. This is fun, right? Cool. Okay, I need to explain a couple of things, some things I, I did. So the first one was, I'm basically using a pentatonic scale of F. Now, why F? Because it's part of the G minor chord. So four notes. And just playing that descending pattern, just coming down one note of the pentatonic each time. So essentially four notes. So one and two. One and two and three. So that's the first one. The other one that I did was I'm doing this, um, what I call Stitt's Bits. So if you ever listen to Sonny Stitt, 
essentially what he does is so in C minor and then F7 it's like the C minor chord of 3, 5, 7, and 9 and then when you get to the F7 play 3, 2 of F7 That's like bebop, bebop. And you can do that on any chord throughout the tune. So even if you started on G minor, to C7, it would work. And then if you did the A minor seven flat five to D7, same thing. So there's two things in there. there. The first one was the pentatonic scale. And then I switched to something else. So there's a couple of things that are actually pretty useful. All right, let's go back to the tune, play something and see what else we can come up with. I think that one needs an explanation. So essentially just chromatic scales and just sort of playing these little riffs. Now you don't always have to like catch every single chord and make sure that you're spelling out the chords or playing the proper scales. There's just little things that you're throwing in to make it interesting. Chromatic scales, that's all that is. Find things to make it interesting. All right, let's go back to the beginning and let's do some more. Okay, so one cool thing that I did there was on the G minor chord, it's kind of like a, a little riff that I worked out. And that's infinitely useful when you're playing minor chords, especially when you're doing like bossa nova feel. So let me explain it. Just the G minor chord. Actually, I kind of picked this up from, from Chikoria. <laughs> so spell the chord, then go to the third, uh, fourth to the third, to the fifth. And then the destination note is the G. So what we're doing is we're playing below and then two notes above. All right, that was fun. I think we have time for like one more. So let's 
play a little bit and see what else we come up with. All right, the last thing I'm going to explain is out of the G scale, if you play that in fourths, essentially you can create patterns out of those fourths, which is kind of neat. And I did that a couple of times. The first time I just did it straight three notes. And I picked the notes out of the scale. It's not always perfect. But then also what I did was I played one, four, five to one. So that's kind of cool too, right? Just playing those fourth patterns. And that's how you put together a solo. So if you need to know the chords and the scales, we did that in a previous video. I posted the playlist earlier. But then when you're soloing, you're just trying to find some interest. And often when piano players do lessons, and I've, I've obviously taken lessons from many people, sometimes you ask them what they're doing and they can't really explain it. So I hope this was helpful to you. I'm basically going to continue on a little bit. I'll play a little bit of the solo and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for your time. Well, thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We're making five videos a week, just like this one on various aspects of music and the music business. So I'd really appreciate it if you could come back and join me another time. Take care.